Zombies, right? You know them, you love them, we love watching them die. Narratively, they're a physical manifestation of different concepts, whatever different concepts you really want that day that is negative. These concepts usually have no physical form. They represent things like death, as they slowly and unavoidably shamble towards you. They also represent disease, they represent paranoia, they are a reliable background threat to a story. For games, they are just really easy to code. All they have to do is walk at you and attack you when they get close, that's easy to code. This led to hundreds of games using them, movies and shows as well. Not everyone has watched The Walking Dead, but almost everybody knows about it. Today we are going to dissect these creatures, find out what makes them dangerous, and I'll tell you why I don't think they are that dangerous. I mean, they, they're dangerous, but like, not apocalypse level date? I'll, I'll get into it, don't you worry. As you may well know, there are many different types of zombie. Our first type is a classic, a simple reanimated body. It's a dead guy, it's slow, cause it's dead, and it's dumb, because it's also dead. But they require a headshot to kill, for in their brain, that they're not using good, cause they're dead. Usually these types of zombies come in absolutely massive numbers, and this is your average Minecraft, Romero, or Walking Dead type zombie. Next is the more modern type, the feral human, typically being as squishy as a human. They are fast and brutal. Sometimes they come in less numbers, but they make up for that with speed. These are your World War Z 28 Days Later zombies. After that, we've got our special zombies, Hulks. Grabber thing is jumpers that also sometimes grabber thingies and they sometimes explode like a bomb but a person but not a person because it's a zombie but it's a bomb what? all that cool fun things that happen these are the toughest and usually have a few categories while they differ individually between movies and games they will be covered less as in not at all because I um forgot I wrote this part of the script oopsie now what what is, is, is zombie zombie what does zombie do what is what, what, do zombie what do what is job the job kill people they kill that's what they do in some fiction they bite people and then they just leave but uh some, some sometimes they kill people and then sometimes they kill the people and then eat the people which I don't wouldn't that just be zero zombie from that because you ate him what <laughs> But anyways, for today, we're going to go with the uh, bite and kill, unless it's a feral, and then it's a bite and move on, just because that's better for the zombies. Killing people? Pretty straightforward. They bite you, and then, and, and, then, and then they kill you with their arms and stuff, and then the biting. It's not very dangerous, really, is it? Uh, yeah. Well, as you know, these zombies, while not being individually strong, they come by the condo. One grandma is not dangerous, but 100 grandmas and 50 different game devs is a threat. Now, how do you get 100 grandmas? Well, you bite them. A zombie bite or a kill results in one more zombie. That's our math for today. Whoa. But that's not all, folks. For example, in Resident Evil 3, the zombies of Raccoon City were infected by the water system. Whoa, wouldn't we love H2O on this channel? In The Last of Us, they use spores like mushrooms do. Mushrooms. Mmm, I love sautéed mushrooms. Anyway... And in most viral depictions, like 28 Days Later, blood and other bodily fluids are contaminated, so don't drink zombie blood, you moron. That's bad for you. <laughs> it will kill you. And in some select media, everyone is infected, and you rise when you die. That's usually the, the, like the shambling guys. That's, that's what those guys are. That's where they came from, if you want to know that. That seems like a pretty good summary of zombies, I think. Let's dig into why I think the zombies have a few problems. And just so you know, in this next section, I mostly focus on the feral human types of zombies, and I forget about all the other types of zombies, so everything we did to this point is, um, I definitely used it, don't worry. It's definitely used, and I don't worry about it. This is a very, these were very important sections. Um, but if you're like, oh, you, you forgot about that, shh, it's my self-guided therapy session. I do what I want. Disclaimer. This is in no way to say that the zombie media is bad or cannot be in the enjoyed. This is for entertainment only. So like, no, but no, like, oh, but, uh, comment, shh, shh, shh. I will not see them. I will not read them. This is my cloud to shout out today and you cannot, you, no, no, shush, 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 good. I will first display an experiment. Space Station 14 has a zombie mode. Each round has about 80 players and five can start as infected. They are tasked with spreading the disease and infecting the entire crew with the zombie disease. For those who do not know, the security team is armed similarly to mall security with a SWAT detachment. 
Zombie infections spread by bites. Obviously, because they're zombie. And zombies are like humans, but they're more durable and can survive in outer space. I do not know why. Unfortunately, they cannot move in outer space. If a zombie goes into outer space, they are now lost. Forever. Yeah. I think this here is a good experiment to see how zombies spread and how people react to their spread. Now, how do zombie rounds go? Well, there's the minute of contact where the initial infected begin attacking people. Usually this can rack up about eh, 10 zombies if done well. However, around 45% of the initial infected are beat to death with crowbars and glass shards by the crew and the zombie apocalypse ends right then and there. Once security begins handing out weapons and people arm themselves, the zombie population drops until all of them die. Only around 10 to 4% of pure zombie rounds end in a zombie victory or majority. The main reason being that zombies cannot build and maintain numbers very easily. You see, this is a matter of logistics and numbers and math. It will take one zombie to infect a crew member. That crew member can usually kill the zombie before turning, meaning there are now, drumroll please, one zombie. If armed security fights zombies, it may take three to infect them with the zombies dying. That leads to one zombie. Zombies operate as a force that is constantly cut off from supply lines, meaning they cannot replace losses and are very vulnerable to negative feedback loops. Zombies also tend to spread out when their crew are hiding after the alarm is raised, meaning that one security guard can wipe the horde alone one by one. Zombies need numbers to kill, and the only way to get numbers is to kill, making gains near impossible. Did I mention only zombie rounds? Yeah, it's zombie only rounds. Uh, this is because most rounds have different threats, meaning sometimes it's only zombies, sometimes it's a completely different threat, like a space dragon or an attack by mercenaries. Different threats can cripple a station. Something as simple as spacing security or impacting the power grid can be enough to boost the zombies far enough to be a real threat, allowing the number of zombies to amass themselves. You see, zombies alone cannot take down the station or the station in our experiment. I mean, they can, but it's very unlikely. Only they can harm the station. Zombie spread is much less of that of a plant or a fungus, and more of that of fire. When zombies lose, the crew never really wins. 20 zombies isn't hard over the course of a round, but that is 20 crew members lost regardless. Defeating zombies is easy. Have every victim kill at least two zombies, and boom, you have won the zombie round. Congratulations, the zombies are dead and you are alive. Maybe. Some people will kill hundreds of zombies alone, and some will kill none, but that usually evens out. Zombies are a crisis. Same as all mass casualty events, but not an apocalypse. Resident Evil, I think, does a good way of showing this. At no point, at least that I know of with my very limited amount of lore knowledge, at no point is the world overrun. It follows patterns of outbreak, and then containment, and then outbreak again, and then you contain it, and then there's the Raccoon City thing, and then it gets overrun and everything, but then we nuke it, and then it's contained again. The zombies always lose. And, and, and I think this is, I think it's, I think it's a little too micro. I think it's too small. Let's go bigger than a space station. Let's say, for example, they overrun a coffee village. There was no military response and the populace was unarmed and surprised and asleep. And they, so they got a thousand zombies and they didn't lose any zombies. And that's all the zombies and that's all the people, right? They got everybody. At this point, a modest military response is enacted. So the military is like, oh man, there's some stuff going over and over there. Let's go check it out. If these zombies wish to spread, then they would have to go to the next town over. For this example, let's say it's 13 miles. It is safe to say that they would not make it to the next town without all dying to the military. If I were to place you in a random place of forest, I removed all human life and your ability to read and all of your knowledge of human infrastructure. How fast would you find another town? Just wandering around. A factor in the fact that there are military patrols going around and some helicopters flying around uh, looking for you. And every time you see one or hear one, you must run directly at them head on. Hopefully you see my point. Uh, spreading from one town to the next is very, very hard to do unless you've got somebody infected in a car. If they do spread from something like the incubation time of somebody being infected in the car, they have to start over every single time they enter a city. It is an, in, un, it is an uneasy balance. It actually is kind of like mushrooms or fire. Hard to remove entirely, but hard to be very overwhelming. This comes down to the fact that zombies spread like a disease, but something like the cold or the flu spreads from being unseen, unsniffable, 
uh, not colored. If pal if pathogens glowed bright red, we would be able to avoid them rather easily. Oh, that desk is bright red. I probably shouldn't touch it and eat it because then I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the Rona and I'm gonna die. Zombies do not necessarily have that nice fog of war. It's a disease that you can see, and then it walks at you, and then you can beat it to death with a lead pipe, and then it dies, and then you are not sick. Congratulations! That being said, it would be hard to find every single zombie, and the paranoia would definitely last for years. I originally started thinking in terms of numbers playing Project Zomboid and Cataclysm. Both games have an in-game reason for a huge sudden spread, one of them in uh, Cataclysm, I won't tell you because I'm making a video on it. You sh sh don't look it up. Don't look it up. But there's a reason. Um, but in Zomboid, it's airborne. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, I think. Yeah, people talk about it being airborne. I think that's what it is. Uh, but anyways, these games also have the option to not respawn zombies. So you kill one and then the zombie number goes down and it can go to zero. Uh, human bodies are pretty finite resource. So I always picked with those options. It became most clear playing the superb survivors mod for Project Zomboid with NPCs clearing zombies, the zombie numbers would just continuously drop as they killed them in small batches leading to the zombie population being very low. With some buildings harboring some clusters, it was still kind of easy to walk around. There was bodies everywhere and it was just like there's not a lot of zombies. Zombies are not a constant. They are like fire as before, thunderstorms and earthquakes. They are a natural disaster. But with all of that weird math fun stuff out of the way, exactly how do numbers happen? How do we, how do I think that, like, it takes more than one zombie to to kill a guy that's armed or, like, you know, expecting zombies or something? How did I get to that? Well, you know, imagine that you are unarmed in an alleyway, fighting one zombie. Your survival rate is probably about 20%. That's, say, I'm guessing all of this, I'm guessing all these numbers. Uh, but you know, zombies aren't real, so my numbers don't have to be real either. Any number of zombies, more than one, uh, that usually equals zero survival chance. As in this situation, escape is not an option, and fist fighting two walkers is hard. Hard to do, especially in a cramped alleyway. So with escape not an option, there's you just can't escape. And you know what else you can't escape now? These ads! You fool! I, uh, you foolish you! I am sponsored by viewers like you! The fool, like yourself! And especially by the wonderful people that gave me money! Like you do! But more! They allow us to do things like freeze me in stasis so I can clone myself an editor for this set. Wait, hi, oh, hi, hey, hold on, hi, wait. Oh, we have people like someone. Marcus, not me, not me again. Kilroy, practacular, but I pronounced it wrong, but I refuse to correct it. <gasps> Dar, dear, der, der Proton, Cosmo Lego 527, Darcy, Evil Platypus, someone again, Marcus, I think again by my BB, another more legally distinct Marcus. <gasps> Jim Bob, someone the third, Dimitro, Grant Lucario, not me too, Eclectic Boogaloo, Alan Watkin, and that, that's, that's all of them. Yep, that's uh, all the people. Um, but that's also not all of them. We must not forget our beans. What are beans? I hear you asking from your moderately sized dwelling. Well, these fine people set up an alarm every single month at 2.07 a.m. to throw bricks of gold through my second story window. We have four people in this golden crime gang. Yay. Practacular, or but pronounced worse than before. Der Varg, I think again? And the unfettered power of the entire economic system of capitalism, specifically of the year 1939, which had a total worldwide GDP of 24, 2467 billion dollars in 1990 money. <gasps> do not fact check that number. It is a very right and good, the goodest number. Please do not. But in honesty, School takes up the time slot where I would put a job, and driving there takes money. And also random garbage takes money, like the anti- like the anti-cactus device I bought, yeah! Unfortunately, it does not buy videos. Uh, it just makes my quality of life go up. It, it kind of gets some pressure off of me, like, you know, to get money. So then, it kind of helps YouTube. But either way, all of you help just by watching my videos at all. 
And for that, I am grateful for my supporters and my viewers as well. Now we shall unfreeze the Lynx, the deranged, the deranged one, the crazy one. Lynx, the deranged. Now let's say you can move out of the alley. If they are slow, you can run away. If they are fast, you will have a hard time running away. So unarmed, you are mostly screwed in a tight space. Don't do that. Do not be unarmed. Do not be unarmed. It's bad for you. Always be armed. Have your arms with you at all times. You need them to grab things. If you are armed, like most humans are, but like if you're armed with something like a like a knife, like knife armed, there we go. Then your survival rate goes up by a lot. Most likely, you can take some zombies down with you. And for the human team, you've done your part. All you need to do is take down at least two. Now for the weapon that makes zombies cry: all firearms, really all of them, anything that shoots or is ranged. Now imagine, if you will, a hundred zo shambler zombies are charging at you at a, a really slow pace down a city street. In this situation, you have a low likelihood of death, but and you could really kill as many zombies as you have ammo for. And then you can just walk a little bit quicker away. Now let's say 100 running zombies, like real quick. All you need to do for the zombies to lose this battle is to kill at least two zombies. If you killed one zombie, oh, it's a stalemate. You are going to be screwed, guaranteed. But your team has a good chance and the numbers turning out in their favor. Next guy sees 95 zombies, then the next guy sees 80, and then the next 60 over and over and over again until the last guy kills one zombie, walks home and is like, wow, there's only one zombie, how'd that happen? Now imagine instead of a tight-ish city street, it's a wide open field in the country like Kentucky, it, which is not a country, it's a state. But, and there are like a hundred zombies out there, right? A hundred people, pretty easy to see from a long ways away. Meaning you, if you are a competent shooter at all, you should be able to kill a good amount of runners. And all of them if they're shamble, because they just real slow. For zombies, their numbers are absolutely horrible. But we have yet to see the final two nails in our zombie coffin. First, let's go with the environment. All right, so we have our average human guy. You are probably human watching this, I hope. Have you ever tore a muscle before? Rolled an ankle? I have. It sucks. Uh, usually, I get such injuries just at living in a careful way. If our human guy started recklessly sprinting through a house with no self-preservation and with a lowered intelligence... Um, that fragile little human body is going to rack up a list of minor injuries longer than my arm. Soon enough bones will break, tendons will snap, energy will run low, and over time that zombie will become much less effective. Shambling bodies rot, living infected can freeze in the cold, and humans, however, will accumulate knowledge over time and become more effective. A zombie will only be in tip-top shape for so long until full speed impacts with guardrails, slides on concrete and skin, and falls down flights of stairs start to take their toll on our little zombie boy. Now, finally, however, we have the zombie's biggest foe, the military-industrial complex. I know, it's a joke. The military could just kill all the zombies. It's a common critique of zombie stuff, but I want to explore why I have this opinion. Now, we have a bunch of well-armed guys in big numbers versus a force that cannot afford losses and is also unarmed. Bombs, artillery, machine guns, grenades, landmines, tanks, it, it, drones, too. All of these ramp up our zombies killed per combatant count by a lot. Meaning some soldiers will be worth apartment buildings in, of zombies, if not more. Not to mention that some common military combatants are immune. Uh, well, like, you know, things like tanks, IFVs, Humvees, all categories of aircraft. Tanks in particular must only drive forward and then backwards and then forward again and then do a little spin and then do that again uh, to rack up a pretty good positive kill count. A helicopter can hover for as long as it has fuel. Planes fly to air bases very far away and all of these can outpace a human running. If a squad is overrun, eh, that squad loses. It sucks for the squad, but overall... They probably racked up a good enough kill count the humans win. In conclusion, in a purely numbers perspective, zombies have way too many leakage factors for manpower. It is very hard for them to build numbers, and even harder for them to maintain them. In the end, they are just like fire, and all fires eventually get extinguished. That has been me, Lynx, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your life. Or unlife, if I was very wrong. Hello, it's editing links now. Give me just a moment and I will slip into something just a little bit more expensive. You may notice that it is quite jittery. 
and also the mouth looks bad and it moves around a lot it's because it's very bad i made it myself um you're probably not seeing a lot either because i'm purposefully limiting this shot so that i don't have to embarrass myself with my bad craftsmanship and my bad tracking so this video was made in about a week and what you're seeing right now is part of the longer video i was trying to make it was bigger than what i was able to actually make at the time and i needed more time so i didn't really have enough time to do it and i needed to get something out this video was not great it's i'm not proud of it but it's supposed to be silly and it's supposed to be kind of filler until i can get the next one out you see that I have to enunciate things weird to make the mouth move properly. Because media pipe is a pain in my butt. I do not like media pipe. Because it's bad and broken and... Mm. That video, like making this model, took a full month. With school on top of that. So, yeah, making that other vid- that's why the video drought has been so bad. I've been doing a lot of things, not even to mention that the blood toggle doesn't work still. If I press up, it looks like I murdered somebody, but you can see my face moving. Wow, 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 wow. It doesn't move with my face, unfortunately. Yeah. So, that's a thing.